One of the most frequent questions I get from writers is, how am I, Mary, able to write so fast? Especially after they hear that I usually knock out my first draft in about three months. Everyone wants to know how. So here it is, my answer. There's one common habit shared by almost all writers who struggle with their writing pace, and I'm going to tell you what that is and, and how to fix it if you want to so that you can write more quickly. Now, I'm not saying you should be writing more quickly. There's no value to writing fast, but if you want to write more quickly, here's how you can do it. Let's go. Okay, ready? I'm just gonna tell you the main thing and not make you wait till the end. The number one thing you need to stop doing in order to write more quickly is to stop editing as you go. Just stop. Right now, stop editing as you go. If you're writing slowly, nine times out of 10, this is what you're doing. You're revising as you go. And what I mean by that is you'll write a paragraph or even just a sentence, and then you'll go back over it and criticize it in your mind and rewrite it. And you're kind of doing this line by line while you're still trying to get the first draft down on paper. If you don't want to take a million years to write your first draft, you need to stop doing this. And if right now you're thinking, oh yeah, that's me. Well, I suspect this might be hard for you because editing as you go is a difficult instinct to resist, especially once you're in the habit of it, but it's worth it. So I know it's probably going to sound impossible. Let's get in some, into some of the ways you can avoid doing this and actually finish your first draft. And I'm also going to tell you why you should trust me on this when I say that doing this will also make your book better. Okay. Yes. And I mean that not editing as you go will make your book better, not worse. But first let's talk about how you avoid editing as you go. And then I'll tell you why it'll make your book better. Okay. Tip number two, to avoid editing as you go, which was tip number one, I want you to try, or at least be open to handwriting your draft. This tip completely changed the way I write a book. The first time I ever wrote a novel, I Googled how many words are in a novel. The internet told me about 70,000. So I just wrote until I hit that number. It was a pretty terrible draft. So I rewrote it again and again and again. I was 29 at the time and single. And, and because I tutored in the evenings for work, I had hours and hours a day to stare at the computer screen, you know, waiting for genius to arrive. Okay, well, finally, I sold that novel and then I sold my next novel based on a proposal, meaning I hadn't written it yet. I just had a synopsis of it and some sample chapters, which you can do after you've sold your first novel. But this time I was in very different circumstances. I had just had a baby. I had a newborn at home. I was really underslept. And for the first time in my life, I would stare at the computer screen and not know what to write. I, I had heard of this. I had heard of writers being daunted by a blank screen before, but this was the first time it had ever actually happened to me. Up until this point, I had always been able to sit at a computer and start typing words. So, okay, so I did Julia Cameron's book, The Artist's Way, uh, which is about unlocking creativity if you're stuck and which I highly recommend. And I decided after doing that training program through her book to try to write by hand. And it worked. Over my eight week maternity leave in about two hours a day, I wrote my book by hand. Writing my drafts by hand and then transcribing them has been transformative for me. And I have written my books this way since. I've also taught it to dozens of writers and it's liberated them as well. And I think this is true for a few reasons. First, when you're handwriting, especially when you're using a pen, it's easier to resist the temptation to go back and rewrite what you just wrote. You would just wind up with pages and pages of strike throughs. And that seems to be enough of a deterrent that most of us just keep moving along, accepting what we've already written. It also eliminates all of the distractions that you otherwise have on a computer, like texts and social media alerts and the temptation of the internet. And it grounds you in the writing that you're doing in that moment. 
Now, I know handwriting isn't always gonna work for everybody, but if you're able to physically, I, I really suggest just giving it a try and seeing how it feels. Tip number three for writing more quickly is to write in writing mode, not in editing mode. Okay, here's a quick exercise. Imagine you're sitting at the perfect place to write and you're having the best writing session ever. The words are flowing, you can see the world you're building clearly. How do you feel? When it's going that well, how do you feel? You feel creative, fun, inspired, connected or immersed, maybe open and playful. Now imagine you're reading something that you've been asked to edit. How does that feel? You're analytical and critical, appraising, attentive to detail, maybe monitoring or vigilant. I want you to remember these different experiences right now. Feel the difference in your body. These are very different modes, right? Your, your whole body can usually tell. If when you're writing, you feel more like you are in editing mode, remember those words I just said, appraising, analytical, critical, monitoring, that mode is neither fun nor productive. We need to shift your mindset. If you write with the mindset of looking for things to fix, you're gonna spend way too much time trying to fix things. You're gonna spend too much time rewriting individual sentences or passages instead of just making it through your draft. But I'm a perfectionist, you might be thinking, because someone said that to me recently. And fine, I'm going to address that in a moment, but we still need you to write in writer mode, not editor mode. Your perfectionist will get her moment in a second. Tip number four for writing more quickly is just to time yourself. Timing your writing sessions can be a very simple game changer for a lot of writers. And it can be really helpful for people who only have a limited amount of time available to write every day. Knowing that you only have a certain amount of time to get those words down can sometimes be the kick in the butt that you need. A, a second ago, I mentioned that I wrote my novel Privilege in about two hours a day over an eight week maternity leave. Having to squeeze it into those two hours because that's when I had childcare was actually really good for me. It forced me to you know, write and not dilly dally. The Pomodoro technique, if you haven't heard of it, is one way of timing your work in these kind of shorter sections. In the Pomodoro technique, you work for about 25 minutes and then take a short break. And you, of course, don't have to use an official technique. If it's 45 minutes that works for you, great, do it in 45 minutes. On a limited time frame, you're less likely to slip into editing mode because there's just no time for it. Time sessions like this aren't right for everyone. But, you know, like anything, if you haven't tried it before, you might wanna give it a shot. You could be surprised how much you can write in an hour or even in just 20 minutes. Okay, I have two more tips for you for writing more quickly. But before I share them, I just wanna invite you to apply for my program, The Book Incubator. The link is down below this video. It's only two questions, it takes under five minutes. And if you're writing a book, you'll definitely wanna check it out. Now back to the video. Okay, tip number five is to practice reading in reader mode. Remember the writing and editing modes I was talking about earlier? Well, there's a third mode I talk about with writers in my program, The Book Incubator, and that third mode is reader mode. How do you feel when you're reading something really good? How would you describe that feeling? I've heard words like curious and transported, entertained, excited, single-minded. As readers, we don't read with the critical eye of editing mode. We don't open what we hope is gonna be a great book looking for grammar mistakes. Now, I'm not saying we turn off our brains, but we're rooting for the author. We're on the same team. We're, we're looking to be transported, not looking to make corrections. You know, we don't crack open the book on vacation hoping to, to find you know, some problems to circle in a red pen. When we read for fun, we just wanna read a good story. The reason I'm bringing this up is because I want you to remember that you are writing for readers, not editors. So when you go back and read your own work, which by the way, I advise not doing until you finish your draft, just remember this, like be in reader mode, not editor mode, because reader mode is gonna help you avoid trying to start fixing everything now. And finally, tip number six for writing more quickly, remind yourself that your future self is better at revising than you are currently. For a lot of us, the instinct to edit as we go comes from the desire to not write something bad, you know? Understandable, I don't wanna write something bad either. But I think a lot of the anxiety that we experience as writers is because we're trying to do everything at once. We're trying to write as we're revising. 
We're trying to get the first draft down as we're trying to polish it up and make it good. And you just can't do these two things at the same time. I think sometimes when people say they're perfectionists, that's not what's really going on. Perfectionism sounds like it's high standards, but I have high standards too. You know, I just know that when I'm writing, I'm not also gonna be trying to edit at the same time. I trust my future self to edit later. And I know that she's gonna be better at editing because she's more familiar with the story than I am. She's actually written it. She knows what the shape of it is. She's lived and breathed it for longer. So I trust her to take care of the editing when it's time to edit. If you struggle with editing as you go, I get it. You aren't alone, but I do want to encourage you to trust your future writer self to polish your draft and make it presentable. This is gonna help you knock out your draft more quickly, and it's actually also gonna give you a better foundational draft. If you've made it this far in the video, I'm guessing that you are writing a book or you want to write a book, and if so, I would love to hear from you. When I'm not writing, my mission in life is to help writers write their dream books. I love it, I live to do it. So if you're curious to know more, I have a free video walking you through my exact process for writing a novel or memoir, and you can get it by clicking below and answering just two questions to apply to my program, The Book Incubator. You can get the video whether you join the program or not. There's no pressure to enroll. Just click below, tell me a little bit about you and your book or your book idea. It's an online form. I'm so excited to hear from you.